Where is justice? What is mercy? Where is the sacred and the holy? In this world full of choices, where is the truth in all the voices? Give me an answer. Don't waste my time. Tell it to me straight. The truth is getting hard to find. I have objections to what I've learned. I have questions and concerns. Give me an answer. Life here on Earth is as coincidental as a snowflake on Pluto. And if you can't accept that, then, you know, maybe you can't accept that we're spawned from evolution and not some superior being. Okay. That doesn't escape the fact, sir, that the universe has a beginning. Everything that has a beginning has a uh, cause. A, but I don't understand how that's true. We don't know the universe is going to get in. The Big Bang okay. points us to the fact that... That doesn't mean it has a beginning. Point, sir, but it's a theory. There's other theories out there about the universe. It's Secondly, the most commonly accepted theory of That doesn't astronomy. mean it's correct. But why, right? why? I know. But, it, but you're asking me for evidence. And I'm telling you, as I observe reality, as I look at the evidence, the evidence is, at this point, it could change tomorrow. But the evidence at this point is, the Big Bang occurred about 15 billion years ago. And there is a beginning to this universe. Well, like it or not, guys, just look at reality around you that you can observe. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. If there's a Big Bang from the other side of this building, and you say what to me, you ask me, hey, Cliff, what happened? And I say, oh, nothing. That's ridiculous. Something caused the bang on the other side of this building. You don't have something that has a beginning without a cause. The fact that that's what the big thing is. Scientific explanation for the cause doesn't mean we want to explain it in the future. Why does have to make it happen? I mean, look at things like rain, you know? When rain wasn't explained, we had gods to explain rain. I'm and not, then that was disproven later. Your guts are the gap. I'm not postulating a god of the gap. Really that's not the point. Guys, could you briefly explain how, like, just because it, it, it obviously it has a beginning, if it has a cause, it has a cause. But why does that make it invalid? Why does that take the validity away from the theory? What does that have to do with the theory in general? It has a it has a cause. Yes, no one's debating that. The Big Bang is what caused the universe. Right. All right. Because the universe is not eternal. Okay. Albert Einstein began to realize we don't know there are consequences. And one of the consequences that Einstein realized was pantheism is not true. Einstein was into pantheism, the idea that nature is God. You see, the guy who really pushed the Big Bang, who really discovered it, Arno Penzias, when he discovered the background noise, Penzias understood as a result of the Big Bang, this is theism coming right at us out of science. And Penzias understood God exists. Because the universe does have a beginning, you have to ask, what is the most plausible, the most reasonable explanation for what caused the Big Bang? Two particles. So why does God have the universe? Well, the guy who discovered the Big Bang said no. Radical expansion of gas. Where did God come from with the answer? Arnold Penzias and Albert Einstein realized there's got to be a creator. There's got to be an intelligent mind. Why? Because when that Big Bang occurred, if the expansion would have been a little bit faster, or if it had been, if it had been 1% faster, or 2% slower, we wouldn't be here. I, that's what makes it so miraculous. That's but why we are so here. Okay, good. And here's, here's the simple thing, well, rationally. That gives validity if it's a miracle, you've got to have a miracle maker. If it's a miracle, I use the you term have a miracle maker. I don't think you're using the Big Bang Theory correctly, because doesn't the Big Bang Theory say that the universe, the energy in the universe is infinite and it expands and contracts on itself an infinite number of times? No. Is that not the Big Bang Theory? No, the oscillating universe theory is, is not part of the Big Bang. Okay. Carl Sagan bought into the oscillating universe theory, but he didn't have any evidence to show to support it. There's no evidence to support the Big Bang Theory. There's no evidence to support the Big Bang Theory? Why don't you go tell that to your astronomy department? Okay. All right. Now, the question then becomes for me, 
in light of the fact that the evidence points to some type of God existing, who is this God? That's where Muhammad, the avatars of Hinduism, Jesus Christ, Shirley MacLaine, enter the picture. They all claim to be revealing God accurately, but they contradict each other. So they're either all wrong, or one of them is right. But they're not all right, because they contradict each other. Now, that's why I plead with you guys, read the Quran. Ask yourself, does the evidence point to Muhammad being a reliable source of information about God? But also read the New Testament Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And ask yourself, does the historical evidence of the way he lived, taught, died, and rose from the dead point to Jesus Christ being a reliable source of information about God? You decide for yourself. I have. And what's been your decision? Um, I'm a self-professed atheist, I guess. More okay. Somewhat agnostic, I guess. I wouldn't be disappointed if there were a God. Of course, nobody would. I would be. Okay. And you should be. Okay, now wait a second. Wait, what I've heard you say, wait a second, now, am I correct in understanding? The reason that you're an atheist is because the evidence is lacking for God's existence. Correct. In my mind. Right. Okay, so now, what are you living for? And what is the evidence that whatever it is you're living for is reliable? Well, I'm living for the, like, I guess I'm, uh, we talk about Darwin, the survival of the species. The, I guess to procreate would be the short answer. You're living to procreate? Yes. Okay, now what's the evidence that the purpose of human existence is to procreate? Lots. Well, uh, survival. Yeah. You're assuming that it's the, same, that it's the same of any other species. No, he has a faith. And his faith statement no, no, is crystal not, clear. It is not faith. Your, yeah, absolutely his faith. It is, is absolutely he not has a, a worldview that says the purpose, the reason I'm here is to procreate. No, no, no that's well, yes, that's a faith that. statement. I agree with. I, I, Thank I agree you. With I appreciate. You. Thank yeah. you for thinking with me. That makes sense. You can understand how frustrating it is I, I, I have for me. faith in science. Even with some people yeah. who don't want to think. I make okay. sense. Good. Exactly. All right, you got you faith, think. right? In science. In science, exactly. <laughs> Whatever you take faith in, you have to. I mean, it only but makes it, sense. But it's not faith, faith, though, because faith is belief without evidence. There's evidence for science. It's still faith. No, it's not faith. No, it's not faith in science. It's not justifiable. By the Webster's definition of faith. No, you may not no claim that it is, but really, no, uh, I personally no, agree with that. I do have a faith in time. Thank you for your honesty. I have a question, though. I, okay, well, let, let me finish with him and then I'll get to you, man. All right, my, my point is, though, now, what I want you to do is, tonight, could you go back and remember this dialogue, this part of it? I asked you why you can't believe in God, and you said because of lack of evidence. Okay, I have to respect that. But then I've asked you, what are you living for, and what is the evidence yeah, that what you are living for is true? Now, what I ask you to do is compare the evidence for the existence of God with the evidence that the purpose of human existence is to procreate. The same, kind of, in the sense that, in the sense that, your logic is not infallible, nor is mine, and you can't, like you said earlier, you can't prove that God exists, and I, I at this point in time, I can't prove that my only job is to procreate. You bet. And I mean, the two will never go hand in hand, and you're welcome, and everybody's welcome to believe what they will. Obviously, sure. I never want to respect anybody's right to believe anyone. Uh, tread on anyone's All right. opinion. Yeah. But I mean, I, I guess it's the kind of the same way that I could turn the question on you and ask you the same thing, and you, you profess that you can't prove that guy. Yes. No, no, right, but I say that here's the evidence. Oh my God. I guess, yeah, right? Now, I have no problem with you saying, I'm sorry if it's not enough evidence. My problem is the following. You've communicated to me, look, the reason I can't believe is because lack of evidence. So now what I want to hear from you is this overwhelming evidence that indeed the purpose of life is to procreate. Because if you can't produce that evidence, there is. then you know what I've got to conclude about you, right? I'm ignorant, I suppose. Well, you've got an incredible double standard, right? That's true. Incredible double standard. In fact, you're guilty of intellectual hypocrisy. Because what you're saying to me is, Cliff, the reason I can't believe that God exists is because of lack of evidence. But then, what I'm living for right now has nowhere near the evidence. Just but I'm choosing to anyway. Because he hasn't thought out his argument as well as you have, he, you know, my, doesn't mean he's wrong. Yeah, there is I, I am aware of that. But I hope you realize the potential here for some incredible intellectual hypocrisy when a person says to you, all right, let's say I say to you, um, why do you believe what you do? And you give me evidence. And I say, well, it's not enough. But then I think you have every right to look me in the face and say, okay, fine. Then as a fellow searcher after truth, what are you living for? 
And what's all this preponderance of evidence that convinces you that whatever it is you're living for is true? Right? Yeah, it's just being fair, right? Of course, it's only for calculus. Doesn't mean calculus doesn't exist. All right. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Oh, you were you were saying that like based on the historical evidence, which religion is actually true? And I would argue that it really depends on what culture you're from, because each culture, like in India, has historical evidence. The Vedas predate Christian thinking. So there is, for them, there's a lot of historical evidence that their version is true. So why can't all of them have an element of truth and all of them have an element that says that is not accurate? Because what you're saying is that there's more evidence that Christian religion is correct. Okay? How much do you really know about Islam and Hinduism and Buddhism to base the idea that somehow our Western perspective is automatically correct? I'm assuming that you've grown up here, you've been told that it's correct, and the historical information you've been given is true. True. However, there's a lot of differences in historical interpretation. We have a King James Bible, and then we have this Bible, then we have that Bible, so there's a lot of discrepancies in historical context. So what, I'm not saying that yours is necessarily wrong. I'm arguing that all of them can have an element of truth, and it's a psychological need to have spirituality, so there's not really a right or wrong answer. So what I hear you saying is, look, bottom line reason that you're a follower of Christ is because of your culture. Right? Okay. If I say to you, I believe that two plus two equals four, is that cultural also? Well, I mean, if you grew up in India right now, you'd be standing here arguing that Brahma is supreme. Okay, just listen to what you just said to me. I don't see how you could believe what you just said to me. Cliff? If you had grown up in India, what you would be saying now is, Brahman is the truth. Ma'am, how on earth do you know that? I know lots of people from India. Very... Pardon? I know lots of people from India. Okay. Right, now, ma'am, I'm, I'm convinced you have <clears throat> articulated very clearly something that's very culturally accepted in our country today, which is, I believe what I believe because of my culture. And I would argue that's a genetic fallacy argument. I would argue that, that I don't think it has anything to do with my genes or anything with my culture. I think that I'm still a human being with a free will, with a mind. And I believe in Jesus Christ, not because mommy and daddy told me to, not because America told me to, but because I made a free decision of the will. After looking at the evidence, to trust in Jesus Christ. But how objectively did you look at evidence from other countries before you say that your choice was better? That's all I'm saying. Anyway. It's like before you decided of all of these options, this one is the best and has the most evidence. Did you really read historical context of the other religions? I mean, all, all I'm arguing, I'm not saying, well, your choice is wrong. I make my choice, you make your choice. But before I ever say, I don't like Islam, it's bad. Okay, or it's not true, there's no basis to it at all. I have to question myself and what makes me insecure about somebody else's beliefs. And I would also plead with you to ask yourself, is not what I've stated out here self-refuting? Because what I've heard you say to me is, Clint, your belief is simply the result of your culture. Are you not just laying your cultural bias now on me? I mean, are you sure that what you're saying is true? Or are you have you just been blinded by your culture? I'm from the same culture as you. I'm from here. I'm not international. You're, you're contradicting me, which is fine. No problem. But notice the contradiction. No, notice what you're saying. You are so provincial. You're so limited by your culture that you've chosen to believe in Jesus. Would you be willing to say the same about yourself? that you are so provincial, so bounded by your culture, that what you believe is simply culturally determined? I, or are you sell it, telling me that you are so intellectually objective that you have separated yourself from your culture and you're having pity on this guy who is culturally blind? Oh, I don't pity you. Yeah. No, now, what are you saying? Tell me, honestly. I did, I did recognize before that my mindset is very, like, I raised going to church and a lot of things kind of didn't make sense to me so I started reaching out and just looking at other perspectives and saying okay what other truth is there and I came to the conclusion that there's not one truth there's one that I feel more comfortable with 
or maybe a couple I feel more comfortable with, but there's not a single truth. So I did examine my cultural perspective, and then I made a choice on my religion, because I realized it fulfills a psychological need for me as much as it does for everybody else. It's not whether one is true or another is untrue. I don't need and I don't need somebody to be wrong for me to feel like my decision is correct. That's all. Are you correct in that? I certainly feel I'm right. Okay. Now, is that truth that you're so wedded to, that all religions are simply a psychological crutch to help you deal with your insecurities, are you absolutely convinced that that's true? This is a very intellectual way of looking at it. It's part of the truth. Yeah, but you mean, don't you I see how you are refuting me. yourself? Because you're, you're, what you're saying is, you're saying to me, Cliff, you hold to this truth. I hear but really, you're blind. Now, when you tell me that I'm blind, what you're doing is you're making an incredible truth claim. And your truth claim is, from my perspective, I see that all the religions that contradict each other are all essentially the same. And my perspective is true, and all these other people, be they Muslim, Christian, Jew, Hindu, are wrong. That's an amazing claim you're well, making. Well, you're saying that they're not true based religion. on historical evidence. I guess for me, and I'm saying like that the historical evidence, evidence is relative. That, right that it's been altered and changed by so many people, and it doesn't matter what country they're from. They know Hinduism has changed. It predated Jesus. It's going to keep going. And as people modernize, we shift in our thinking of what is right and what's wrong. We throw things out of the Bible. You can't stone somebody to death for adultery anymore. Okay, so that was something that did exist that was altered. We I so, to, to say one is right over the other, based on historical evidence, I'm saying historical evidence has been altered and is therefore relative. And you will use historical evidence to support your decision. Of course, but that doesn't make me right, nor does it make anybody else wrong. Just like it doesn't make you wrong, you are. You, so, for all you know, the Muslim, the Muslim militant, terrorist might be correct. That's his perspective coming out of his culture, right? His culture doesn't say that right. Oh, but that is absolutely wrong. There are definitely people groups that buy into jihad as being not just a spiritual jihad, but a physical jihad. There's a lot of crazy people there. I mean, the Ku Klux Klan is no, come on. And did the Crusaders say that the Bible was correct? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, but we don't talk about that. Right, we talk about that? Absolutely, we talk about that. Well, you didn't. You went right, to, you went right, you pandered to the fears of the American people by bringing up Islam. You just, that's why you chose the Islamic militant. You know it, and I know it. And, the, and like, the you're wrong. Like you're wrong. Right. You don't know. You don't know what's going on inside. I mean, that's the most judgmental statement that's been made out here today. You don't know what's motivating me. I don't know what's motivating you, okay? You, you make some incredibly <laughs> judgmental statements. You're amazing to pull that one off. Why, why do you bring up the Islamic militant example then? Of all well, because the it's the first one that came to mind. That's why. Was it the first because I, because I, live in, I live outside of New York City, and I've been to ground zero many times with guys weeping over their dead friends. That's why emotionally it came to my mind, okay? It has nothing to do with... And uh, bias against uh, Muslims. I mean, that particular example may well end when I was here earlier when you mentioned the, the Hitler, you know, Hitler's example. You mentioned that they used Christianity for the same purpose. Right. You mentioned, you, uh, I'm just saying, you were objective about it. You did give examples that you, uh, just for his reference, you did mention that earlier. He did, he isn't just pandering about it. I was learning actual stuff in my class. Well, then why are you wasting your time out here? Because it's it's not fair for someone like you to sit down here on your proverbial soapbox and just talk. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. Oh, you mean these people are not intelligent enough to think for themselves? You're saying they're not. You've made... You Baloney, they're all intelligent enough to think, to think for themselves. I've been an excellent... This guy's an atheist. I respect just, this guy highly. He, he has articulated well, very clearly why he's an atheist. Earlier, he kept saying that people's it's thought processes were childish fair. because they weren't going along the same lines of rationale that he was. How quickly we forget that. <laughs> I have accused people of not thinking rationally at times. That's correct, and I'll stand by that. Oh, and I told him he's an atheist, but he has been very consistent with me, and I respect him highly. We obviously disagree very strongly, but he's been very reasonable with me. You, my man, have been reasonable at times, but other times you've been playing games with me. Rationally, rationally. You have not been following a good line of thought. And I'm just challenging you to think more clearly, that's all. Yes, sir. You guys were saying a lot of the same things. It was just phrase as a perspective. You were saying it from the Christian perspective, and she was saying it from a different perspective. But you guys were arguing the same points. Yeah, this woman and I have a strong disagreement. I'll tell you what the disagreement is. 
She has made a statement that my faith in Christ is simply a cultural belief. My culture influenced me. Okay, now, if I look at you and say, your belief is simply a cultural thing, that's an amazing statement. It's a church camp. I wouldn't disagree with this, though. It's just a good Was, no, it's not statistically correct, because you don't know where I grew up. And I can promise you, statistically, where I grew up, I was the only follower of Christ for a while in my class, in the New England prep school I went to. Statistically, I should be atheist or agnostic, secular. The only reason people go to hell is because they flip God off. And God says, fine, I respect your free will. I gave you free will in the first place. You want me to stay out of your life? I'm stepping back. I'm out of your life. Not only that, the Bible insists there are going to be a lot of people in heaven who never heard the word Jesus. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Rose, Rahab, a Gentile prostitute. Obviously, they never heard about Jesus. They were born hundreds of years before him. But in humility, they put their faith in God. They're going to be in heaven. And finally... Christ insisted that the only reason anybody's going to be in heaven is because he bled and died on a cross. No one's, as we and I talked about, no one's going to be in heaven because they were a good old boy. Because good old boys, like me, are sinners. And we need God's forgiveness, his grace. And that's what Christ offers us through the cross. Okay, so ultimately I do not know how God will judge those who've never heard about Christ. I do know it'll be fair and just. I do know there are going to be a truckload of people in heaven who never heard about Christ. But I also know that the only way to heaven is through the death of Christ, where he sacrifices his life to take the hit that we deserve for our wrongdoing. Now, what about those who have heard about Christ? Reject him. Well, Christ is really clear on that. If you reject Jesus, you're rejecting God. If you reject Jesus, secondly, not only are you rejecting God, but you are rejecting the vehicle through which God offers you forgiveness and eternal life. His son Christ, who died on a cross for our sin. So if I reject Christ, I have to answer to God for the wrong that I have done. I have to pay for the wrong that I have done. I will go to hell. Not because God wants me to go to hell. He wants me to go to heaven. That's why he sent his son Christ. I will go to hell for one reason, because I want to. In other words, I think I know the theme song of hell. The theme song of hell will be, I did it my way. That's the only reason people go to hell. I did it my way, and God says, fine, you can do it your way for eternity. In Acts chapter 4, Peter and John heal a paralytic. The religious authorities are outraged that Jesus is being taught as the resurrection of the life, as the way to heaven by Peter and John. So the religious authorities haul Peter and John in, and they say, what on earth are you doing? What are you talking about Jesus for? Peter says very clearly in Acts 4.12, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Many people today view that as the height of intolerance, narrow-minded, bigoted fundamentalism. Jesus Christ did not apologize for his claim. He stuck with his claim very clearly to be God in human form, to be the way, the truth, and the life. But remember, you and I have nothing to fear about Jesus Christ. For if a person genuinely puts their faith in Christ and they become a real Christian, Christ commands them to love, not just to love their friends, not just to love nice, good people, but to love everybody, including their enemy. When you really follow Jesus Christ, You are following the one who, as he was bleeding and dying on the cross, prayed, Father, forgive them, my enemies, for they know not what they do. When a person genuinely trusts in Jesus Christ, that does not lead to intolerance, to bigotry, to hatred, to narrow-mindedness. Quite to the contrary. When a person puts their faith in Christ seriously, they become more loving, they become more gracious, more forgiving, they become a peacemaker. October 5th, 2006, Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania. A 32-year-old milkman named Charles Roberts busted into, broke into, a one-room Amish schoolhouse. 
He had obviously planned this attack very clearly and carefully. He had a shotgun, a rifle, a handgun, two knives. He brought some tools and some boards with him. He brought some lubricant. Sexual molestation was clearly in his thinking. As soon as he broke into this one-room Amish schoolhouse, he asked the teacher to leave with the boys and with the pregnant mothers and mothers with infants. Then he turned his attention to the little girls, ages 6 to 13. He had them line up in front of the chalkboard. He barred the door with two by fours and two by sixes so that nobody could enter. And then he communicated to them that he was going to hurt them. The oldest girl, 13-year-old Marion Fisher, said, why? Why are you trying to hurt us? And Charles Roberts communicated, because I lost an infant daughter, and I am angry with God. So Charles Roberts was going to take out his anger against God on these young 6 to 13-year-old girls. It was incredible. The Amish school teacher went right to a neighbor's house, called the police. They arrived nine minutes after she called. Inside that one-room schoolhouse, 13-year-old Marion Fisher turned to Mr. Roberts and said, why don't you let these other girls go? You can go ahead and take my life. After she said that, her 11-year-old sister, Barbie, said, please, after you execute my sister, go ahead and execute me. Amazing love that those two sisters were willing to sacrifice their lives, as long as Mr. Roberts would let the others free. Mr. Roberts did not buy into either one of those statements. Instead, he took his gun and he began to execute the children, pumping bullets into their bodies. As soon as he began to fire his guns, the police crashed into the schoolhouse. But just before they got to him, he blew his head off. The response of the Amish people was amazing, off the charts. The Amish were from Switzerland, and they were pacifist Christians. And when the leader of the Amish people found out what Mr. Roberts had done to some of their children, he pleaded with his followers, with his fellow Amish people, to love Mr. Roberts and his family, and to not hate, to not seek revenge. Then, when money began to pour in to help those Amish families who'd lost children, the Amish intentionally put some of that money aside to care for Mr. Roberts' widows, M Marie Roberts, and their daughters incredible love, a love that was triumphing over death. That is real Christianity. Real Christianity is not hating gay people. Real Christianity is not hating people of a different race. Real Christianity is not hating atheists and agnostics and Muslims and Jews. Real Christianity, obviously when you read the Gospels, is loving and respecting all human beings because all people are created in the image, in the likeness of God. If you're an atheist, if you're an agnostic, if you're a Muslim or a Jew or a Buddhist or a Hindu, you have nothing to fear about people who genuinely put their faith in Christ. Because when a person genuinely puts their faith in Christ, they are commanded by Christ to love their enemy, to respect all people, and to stand up for the dignity and sanctity of all of human life. Do not reject Christ because of some narrow-minded bigot Realize that Jesus made some very clear truth claim to be God in human form, to bleed and die on a cross for your sin, to forgive you and to reconcile you to God. Yes, Jesus warned, if you reject him, you'll spend eternity separate from God, because when you reject Christ, you're rejecting God. Yes, Jesus warned that if you reject his death on a cross for your sin, then you will have to pay the just penalty for your own sin. But he never used manipulation. He never used force. He never coerced anybody. Jesus lived a life of total love and respect of human life because he understood human beings are created in the image of God. And Jesus said to his followers, care for the sick, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and where, whenever you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you're doing it to me. Isn't it time to read the Gospels for yourself? Isn't it time to investigate the historical evidence that points to the credibility of Jesus Christ? Read them for yourself. Don't take it from me. And based on the historical evidence, put your faith in Jesus Christ, for indeed he is the way, the truth, and the life. Hard to find. I have objections to what I've learned. I have questions and concerns. Give me an answer.